yes, we. We out here. We out What's here. What's going on? Hell yeah. We're on a podcast. My first podcast guest ever. Mm-hmm. Daniel Curtis Lee. In the building. The man, the myth, the legend. Yeah. Actor, right. producer, oh. director, oh. linguistics expert. Oh, yeah. The man. How are you? I'm doing well. You drove quite a bit to be here. Today. It was a mission Burbank, dude. Are you used to the the commute coming from Long Beach for like auditions and stuff? Dude, you know, I've been staying in downtown L.A. recently, so I don't have to drive as far. And like COVID, uh, it's bad to say, but it, it was a lifesaver because I, we didn't have to drive. We yeah. were just doing the auditions like, you know, uh, online and whatnot. Um, but... Yeah, I you know I've been making that drive from Long Beach to LA since we were working on Ned's back in the day. So Which is insane. Yeah, two hour I, drive sometimes. Yeah, well, and I'm spinning my gum out. I totally forgot to take it out. By the way, <laughs> so I'm so attractive. Um, <laughs> I yeah, I don't think people realize like just in that little cusp of traffic between Long Beach and like once you enter LA, it's insane. Horrible. Horrible. Yeah, yeah and we were COVID. way in North Hollywood. Like, yeah. Burbank is like a whole other town. Yep. The Valley, forget it. Oh, yeah. I won't even. I know people that live in L.A. that won't even drive to the Valley to visit anybody. Facts. At all. <laughs> Facts. Then there were there were like protests, too, coming back uh, today. It was like the um, I think the the hotel workers, they had like a little protest Here? thing. No, it was in DTLA. It was in uh, DTLA. So coming down through that traffic uh, where the 101 meets the 110. It was a little bit of I didn't stop know and they go. Were, so they were protesting there. Yeah, yeah. They're on strike in Vegas too. All the culinary workers. Uh, it feels like everybody's on strike. The actors on strike. Actors the, the, on strike. The writers are back now. Have but, you heard anything? Uh, I haven't heard anything. I know they were meeting today, but I didn't hear anything. I haven't heard much. We get those like little emails or whatever, and they're like, "Oh, this is the new tactic we're using. We're this getting back into update. talks." Yeah, <laughs> just updates. Just give me my money, Sag. Give me my <laughs> money. I didn't know, by the way, that you. That the leads only get paid like a standard rate. I didn't realize Dude, that they did not get residuals. I've we, never been. We got paid over scale, like for us uh, on on Ned specifically. We got paid over scale, and they're like, "Oh, you have to pay all this money back, and the producers have to receive this much before you can like see a penny." And yeah, I, I feel like we'll never get that. It's very yeah. similar to uh, recording artists, like when they get an advance yeah those so you had yeah. to pay money back no 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 no. we don't have oh, to pay money oh. back no they're saying you have to pay um into i guess like a pool like the producers have to have made x amount over what you were paid scale which i still feel you like know, there's just, money being hidden a whole bunch of codes we're not gonna pay we're not gonna pay, we're you. Not gonna pay we're you guys we're just not gonna pay you dude it's so shady especially like when we get into streaming like ned's is streaming like everywhere like it's on netflix it's on freaking paramount plus and it's like we couldn't even sign those rights away like streaming wasn't a thing at the time so uh it's it's shady shady I business i can't even believe that you won't just the fact that it was on Netflix and it wasn't even on Netflix before and you guys didn't even get a, a cent from that. They just nothing. said, hey, no. guys, Ned, Ned's is up on Netflix now. Nothing. Yeah. Absolutely nothing. No, it's it's super whack, man. And like, you know, they'll use my face as like the little icon for the show. And I'm like, it's bittersweet. I'm like watching it with my nieces. My and I'm like, oh, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> Look at your uncle on TV. <laughs> bro it's <laughs> whack dude like this is embarrassing yeah. all right yeah super. i just want a paycheck i mean yeah th that's simple i yeah. really hope that changes i do we'll hope that see changes. we'll see if if sag is doing the right thing and really advocating for us um that there will be some changes i'd love some like you know retroactive like get me back pay dude <laughs> you like come should. on i mean you should if i'm getting pennies for ned's which i did I, i'm getting the penny i checks. should be at least getting some dollars you know that's insane, especially yeah. the rate back then for what it calculates to now. It's the same. I mean, it's the same with music musicians and musical artists. Yeah. No one, no one, as millions, as many of streams as they get from oh, yeah. Spotify and Pandora, like they're not getting oh, as oh, oh, five, you know, of every sale, every dollar that comes in, you're not even getting a full penny, fractions. Damn. Yep. Uh, do you normally get, uh, you had, I guess people would say that you had a glow up. Oh, a glow After yeah, Some people say that, yeah. Did you, it, what's the number one comment that you get? Do you get the, like, oh, I had a crush on you back in the day? I get those. I and get those, like, but I played a nerdy character. Right. So I'm like, did you really Likewise. have a crush on me? <laughs> you know, yeah. Likewise. Yeah. What, what, what ladies always say is, uh, oh, Cookie can get the cookie. 
You know, I'm like, okay, I like that. You're all thumbs up. Mm -hmm. Thumbs and up. Thanks. Thumbs up. I appreciate it. I feel like for the people that are perceived in a certain way on TV, mm -hmm. sometimes people have that perception of you in real life. Mm -hmm. And then you totally, I mean, you were always oh, yeah, kind of tall, but you yeah. like really grew up and everybody was like, damn, Cookie, Cookie be looking good. Yeah. So yeah. I guess maybe you've probably had perception from others as both a jock and a nerd. Yeah, right? yeah, both. I, I, yeah, I've existed in both of those realms. Like someone who didn't know me from the show, they would say jock. Someone who knew me from the show would be like, oh, I bet this kid's a, a nerd, you know? What is the most common misconception that people have about you? About me? Mm -hmm. Oh, that I have money? <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's that's a, a big one there, one. you know? For most, like, child actors, I feel like that's our thing. Unless you just really just took yeah, off skyrocketing. Yeah, the one thing I've noticed is that if you Google somebody and they say their net worth, their you're net like, worth? it's total bullshit. I'm like, this isn't real life. Where? I'm like, someone come into my life and show me how to manifest these millions. Like, like I get, I've, I've got great angles to go from, you know, and I find myself in some cool situations where I'm like, I can run into some windfalls of money and this is great. I'm thankful for my, you know, past and history yeah. in the entertainment industry because uh -huh. uh, it's afforded me a lot. Like even just the little thing of being able to show my nieces me on TV, I can use that as a piece to, you know, uh, garner attention from high profile people and get jobs and stuff like that. So it's like a little... A little bit of a cheat code. It's it's cool to um Already to have, have that, that past. foundation, yeah. especially probably seeing adults who are trying to make it now, and you're like, damn, yeah. not that yeah. it's not doable or feasible, but it is a nice stepping stone to be like, I already have this history of being able to work in this yeah, business. A base. And here's my, here's yeah. my roster of things I've done. Yeah, to not start from like scratch. Yeah, uh, but yeah. Being behind the camera or in front of the camera, like which one do you like more? Ooh, which do I prefer? Wow. I, I mean, which one do you prefer now? I now? guess. Because I'm sure you've probably loved them both equally. Ooh, yes, I have. And and you know what? Getting behind the camera was something that I needed. There was a time in my life where I just felt like, oh, just feel hopeless and you know, I have no drive. You know, I'm I'm just waiting for a call for someone to call me and say, Hey, you look great. I want you to show your face in my project. And that just gets played over time, man. Uh, mm -hmm. So I really just dove into the technical side of things. And I was like, I'm going to learn cameras. I'm going to learn lighting. Maybe I want to be a gaffer, you know? Like, y y you really just don't know. I'm going to get into editing, get into that color grading. Position. You know, why not? I want to be the boom guy, Best you boy, know? yeah. You can do your job <laughs> well. You're doing it right. That part, man. That's awesome. Go ahead. Sorry. So, so, so I, love, I love behind the scenes because it's something that I really felt like I had to work at. Like, being in front of the camera... That just kind of flowed. I've always been a fairly charismatic person, love to make people laugh. And it, it was just natural. But the work I had to put in to be able to uh, command a set, you know, be like a, a producer on a project or a director, show everyone the, the full gamut of the jobs that they have to take on, uh, being able to let everyone know what their position is. Like I've worked with, um, you know, some ragtag groups before, and I really just had to break it down from my own experience of how I've seen shows be run and then give everyone their assignments and really make some great uh, projects. And yeah, being, being a director is just super fun. Like I got to work with Snoop earlier this year. I thought oh, that was awesome. Dope. I forgot about yeah. that. Directed a video he did with uh, this artist, Khadija. I went to Africa with Africa with her to, uh, to film in Sierra Leone. And so directing really can take you a lot of places and you have to meet more people. As an actor, you just show up on set and do your thing. Yeah. But when you're directing, you have to shake hands with everyone, pull the crews together, and you meet a lot of talented people. I love Tell it. Tell me about Sierra Leone. Sierra Leone was lit, man. Um, and I'm saying lit. It was a beautiful, it was a beautiful country. Um, it, it, the one thing I hate about flying into their capital city, which is Freetown, it's called Freetown, mm -hmm. uh, Sierra Leone, is that you fly into a whole like other side of like like it's not even the city. The city's it's not an island. It's kind of like a little peninsula thing, but their airport is like a hundred miles away. And so you fly into the small little airport and you have to be, first of all, you get bum rushed by all the people out there. You know, they're just looking to, you, to make some money. Have I've been to Cabo. Cabo? Yeah, they're same all thing. With the pamphlets, and you're like, Dude. no. Oh no, and I, oh, I got scammed. No. I, I've done the Cabo thing. Tell and me about it. Yeah, I see. I thought Sierra Leone would have been bad, but <laughs> timeshares, guys, do not. Do not spend your hard-earned money on a timeshare, my God. Wait, Ugh. you actually spent money? 
I, I blew it, blew it. Now I've had a lot of fun with those timeshares, but as time goes by, you're like, wait a minute, I'm <laughs> an actual idiot. What did I do? You know, you, you, you go to your little city or whatever. You're trying to impress the girl that you're with. And, you know, people are like, oh, yeah, I'll get you a free ride to the uh, to the resort. And, da -da 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 -da. and there's all these package deals. And you just got to go to this meeting for like 30 minutes. And then you end up going to this freaking meeting like you're having a great time. You have your first two days at your resort, you know, soaking in all the fun. Then they're going to funnel you into this. This 30 minute meeting that turns into a three hour meeting, bro. They're going to feed you all this alcohol. And uh, I mean, oh, my God, it's, it's horrible. The tactics, <laughs> they put you under so much pressure to get you to sign off and purchase these like fractional shares of a of a space. And you can go anywhere in the world. And da -da 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 -da. Don't do it. How did you get out of it? I didn't. <laughs> I didn't. And I'm like, dude, I'm like. My integrity, it sucks because you end up having integrity and you're like, well, I got to pay the full amount because I don't want, the, you know, the stuff on my record and da, da 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 But then you're like, but it's so shady. Do I even have to pay? It's from a foreign government. Oh, I am government. so uh, sorry, Daniel. Uh, yeah. You learned your yeah. lesson, though. Learned a lesson. So you guys don't have to learn that lesson. Don't get a timeshare. This is camera right here. Dude, this is my camera. Yeah. I'm pointing at the <laughs> wide camera. Don't get a timeshare, guys. God. <sighs> oh, I am so sorry. <sighs> yeah. You learned your lesson, though. You're like, never again. A, yeah, a lesson. Like, traveling, I love. Been doing it for a while. You don't need a timeshare to do it. Like, there, there's certain little perks, but they just tack on these fees, and they're, you know, just comes out of the... Damn. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, timeshares are horrible. That and was in Cabo? Uh, or was that... Where did they rope you in from? Cabo. I think they, yeah, no, no, no. It was, it was Cabo. That's yeah. what, that's where they kind of got me. And then you end up going to their sister resorts uh -huh. and they're like uh -huh. another 30 minute meeting. And I'm like, well, dang, the, the last 30 minute meeting was, they, they, that was not right. Oh, it won't be like this one. It's going to be just like that yes. one, guys. Don't. Yeah. Puerto Vallarta. I think that was, that was the last one where I was like, no, no, can't do this. I yeah. was told, I was told, I went, the first time I ever went to Cabo was for a wedding. Okay. And they had cars picking everybody up, like they had a shuttle service. <laughs> but with the wedding invitation came instructions, like when you go to Cabo Airport, do not let you're going to, you. you're going to, the doors are going to open. You're going to get bombarded by all of these people selling you a timeshare, like walk yeah. right past them, tell you like, so I knew going in, what to expect. but if I hadn't, like they don't let up. Yeah, they don't let you go no, either. No, not at all. You have to just keep walking straight. And like I went out there, I'm feeling all good, you know. I, you know, I, and of course, you know, linguistics major, so I'm speaking Spanish, interacting with the guys, and I'm feeling all cool and whatnot. And they're like, "Oh, we got him. <laughs> this we guy, got he, one. we got one. We got one." <laughs> so you know, I'm just doing my thing, and then they just throw these little free things. But then there's a big bill at the end of it, guys. Ugh, ugh, horrible. But anyway, back to Sierra Leone, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So uh, Sierra Leone, interesting. Same thing. You're getting bombarded by people, but they're not trying to sell you timeshare. So that's good. Um, they really just are, you, you know, the, the economy is just different there. So they're just mm -hmm. trying to figure out how they can help you want to carry your bags or something like that to see if you'll, you know, maybe give them a couple of dollars or whatever. Yeah, that I would pay for. Oh, good. You know, like, and help, helpful people. But anyway, we fly into this airport, which is 100 miles away from the actual city, and we have to take a ferry in. It's like a... Uh, I think like a 30, 40 minute ferry all the way over to uh, to Freetown. And the ride is just super, super cool. But um, you, you feel like it's going to sink the whole time. You feel like you're on a ship that could easily just, you know, just, I don't know, just capsize. But we made it. We made it. And the people there were just so helpful. We had a Nigerian film crew. We, we had to we had to research a the film crews in the area that were doing big things. So like. Uh, I was like, okay, who's a huge artist out there? Uh, Burna Boy's one, Wiz Kid, in that West Africa area. Love me some Burna Boy. Burna Boy, oh yeah, so cold, so Love cold. Love me, I've talked about him enough. I yeah, I saw a sh he played at Coachella this past year, oh, and he was it. the most amazing yeah performance I've ever seen. Dude. Like just his whole band and his show, and they're just on top of it, man. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, the, yeah, the Afrobeat vibes, like it's. It's becoming the new pop. It the, really like, is. yeah. It really is. It's become very popular. Now, now I'm kind of like, well, damn it. I don't hmm. want it to become so popular yeah. that like, <laughs> you know, Take the people that the don't know anything about it are trying to like hop on the train. But I oh, guess, yeah. I guess whatever. He's playing at BMO next week. I saw I was like, Oh, dope. Are you 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 interested in going or 
Yeah. yeah, I see you at all. You're always at something, and you always break out the like cowboy boots, or maybe that was I one post me, you did I in love cowboy me some concerts. There's nothing yeah, beats yeah. live music, you know? No, 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 no. You can't beat it. I love me some live music. So anyway, Burn a Boy. Go ahead. Oh, yeah, yeah, Came yeah. out yeah. of there, Nigerian. So, so yes. So I'm like, I'm here to you know do a project. I don't want to bring my own you know film equipment out and everything like that. Uh, and some of my team was like, oh no, we're not going to travel to Sierra Leone. I've never been there. Da, da, da. So I had to find a film crew out there. Uh, you know, it was the job I was tasked with. And so me and my guy, Sean Two Miles, he was the producer on the uh, on the songs. Uh, we did started... a couple of things with you, right? Oh, yeah. That's yeah, like yeah, my yeah. brother. He's from Mississippi, too. Okay. So we're both some Southern boys, man. We're, we're in the lab all the time. But um, but yeah, so we we looked up crews that had worked with these prominent, um, you know, a African performers. Uh, Sierra Leone is just so small. Nigeria, a couple hundred miles away. Um, but we found this team and they were like so spot on. They were awesome, dude. Um, I felt like the, the energy that they had attached to them while they were shooting was just, it was just something I had never seen in the States. They were so eager. It wasn't like, oh, we're showing up nine hour day. We got to be, you know, out of here at, you know, at this time. And they, they weren't like lackadaisical about it. Like, our steady, Hollywood. yeah they yeah. weren't jaded man and the, the steady cam operator i had never seen someone do so many tricks bro he was like a martial artist with this thing and the shots came out just beautiful and i was like i want to hire a nigerian team to just everywhere. be out here yeah everywhere i go I'm like, are they Jesus. still are they still down there yeah yeah they're still getting it in and i mean they travel now they're getting so big uh so so yeah they're they're doing a lot of work now yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, man. You did a Bad Bunny cover recently, and I absolutely loved it. Oh, Your yeah, voice is so good. Oh, I appreciate you. I appreciate so you. good. Yeah. Do you have anything planned for music coming up? Are you... <sighs> music right now? Uh, I'm always in the lab. I do a lot more writing for other artists these days versus me like actually hopping on. But, you know, with this push of the podcast, I was like, oh, let me get back in my bag real quick. Yeah. And, you know, you speak should. to the Spanish. How do you, how is your songwriting process? Like, what is your songwriting process? Do you have mm -hmm. one? Uh, I mean, it, it really depends. Um, for my own projects, you know, I try to dial out, you know, what I want to convey in like a, a full like project. Um, so across multiple songs, like what's the energy that I'm trying to give to the world? Mm -hmm. What are the things I've been focused on in my own life? Uh, but for other artists, it's like, you know, what's the beat? You know, we're going for like poppy. I'll take reference tracks and say, OK, we know we want this BPM. So that's the kind of meter of it. What are some key topics that seem like they're hitting? Uh, so so we, we really go towards the trends, especially when you're talking about getting um, larger features attached to projects. Mm -hmm. You, you got to make sure that it's in line with what's already being played and put into rotation on the radio. So it can be a little bit. Um, confining a little bit confining because you're trying to uh match with radio but whenever i'm doing my own personal stuff it's really like whatever's on my heart so uh just th you know throw the beat on if there's some like uh, some instrument that's in there that's maybe throwing things off you know i'll have the uh the producer pull it out mm -hmm. go in with the engineer and really find the tone i'm more of a tone guy because like you you mentioned the voice that i, I don't think you would have said the same thing about the voice if I just went with how I normally rap. I was like, okay, what's what's like the flow that fits best for for this beat, mm -hmm. and also just delivery and register. Like I can be way high up here, like or just you know. So tone matters to me. I think everything has to have its own airspace. All your instruments, and then also your vocals, because the vocal is an instrument. So you start with the beat. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a beat guy. I want to complement the beat with, uh, with my vocal. It's the first time I've actually heard anybody say it like that, which mm. I think for a lot of people, because especially for people like me with ADHD, sometimes it's hard to find a starting point. But mm. beats are very like I know a good beat when I hear it, or yeah, like yeah. I would start normally start with a beat, but and then everything you can kind of like fill in the space because yeah, if you don't have the in. beat there, then it doesn't really yeah, work. No. Like acapella happens and that's really great and cool. There's a lot of pressure to just be just great at acapella when you can take a beat that, you know, is already infectious. You, you know, you love it. You just ask yourself, what complements this thing? Mm -hmm. You know, what are some counter melodies that almost speak to me before I even lay my you know vocals down? Who is your favorite like musical artist right now? Do You have Ooh, one. I mean, hey, Berna's killing, man. I'm a big Berna. You heard his fan. new album with the latest one. No, I have not. 
Sorry. I, 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 think pieces, called, but... I think I I think it's called I told him. Yeah, told yeah, him. I haven't listened in this entire I've, enough. I haven't listened to a full album like front to back in a long ass time. But that when you okay, you recommend Multiple it? Multiple times. Okay. Multiple times. Okay. He's just like I can't explain, you know, the feeling that I get when I listen to his music. I mean, you know, Afrobeats specifically, but his like I just yeah, I love him so much. Him, bro. He he knows what the what the crowd wants to hear, man. Yeah. Do you have a favorite podcast right now? Are you listening? Do you other Ooh. other than your own the Ned's Declassified Podcast Survival Guide? <laughs> the Ned's Declassified on all podcast streaming platforms. Oh, all streaming platforms. <laughs> um, dude, I listen to a podcast called The Minimalists. Have you heard of the minimalists? No. no. They are these guys that basically teach you how to live a a life minimalist lifestyle. A minimalist list lifestyle, but a full minimalist lifestyle. So they're really just breaking down how you can, you know, really enjoy this new status of being a minimalist. Clearly so I that like is it. my entire personality. It's minimalist. <laughs> oh yeah, just right. the bare minimums. You know, <laughs> no, you, you, this Less setup is, is so more for stylish, me. man. <laughs> You got style, and you you shouldn't be Thank ashamed you. of it. You Thank know, you, you, you like you know, what you like. I did see something on Pinterest, though. It um, there is a name for this. It's called dopamine decor. Dopamine decor. Yeah. Okay. I always just thought it was a personal style. Like I love colored lights. I don't know. I think it's also I'm a '90s kid. Like I grew huh. up with bright colors that just didn't mesh or match yeah. at all. It like have hot to make sense. neon colors. Just neon. Yeah, yeah, I saw it advertised to me on Instagram was dopamine decor. And I was like, dopamine oh, my decor. God, I've never felt so exposed in my entire life. I Just mean. my ADHD is like really showing right now. Run it. I love it. You Run it. it Thank you. Thank <laughs> you. Uh, so you have I'm going to I think I'm going to try and get this up by next week so oh, you dope. can pitch. Oh, yeah. We, the live podcast. We have a live podcast November 13th at The Regent Hell in downtown yeah. Los Angeles. Which Come is, hang out with us. That's going to be fun. Yep. Are you going to pull up? I'm pulling my up. Next question. I, already, I already put it in my calendar. Oh, yeah? Okay. I'm cool, so, cool. it I is so cool to see <laughs> the reach that you guys have gotten Dang. from Ned's. I, and, you know, after like talking to you guys the last time, I really left and I, I guess it just never really made sense to me because I was in it. Mm, right mm -hmm. so like for me i didn't it, it still doesn't register that like the impact the impact that that show had on a lot of people because and they were around my age right but um or a little bit younger but it's just so crazy to see how many people even to this day and even with netflix yeah. releasing it yeah. how much it has impacted people and how yeah. much people like totally love the three of you you yeah. know, it's just, it's, it's crazy to see that it was 20 years ago and yeah. people are still just like gushing over, you know, yeah, it's the nostalgia, man, the nostalgia when mm -hmm. you can, uh, I guess, connect with people in those very, uh, I don't want to say intimate parts of their lives, but those uh, formative years, um, you really, you really, you really make a lasting impression and there's just a connection there. So when I do speak with people who know the show and grew up with it, it, it almost feels like uh, I'm speaking with an old friend who like, I don't necessarily remember, but they like vividly yeah, remember they know it and they get it. Yeah. So I, I'm so always awesome. flattered when people have, have seen it. And when they tell us that it was something that had a positive impact on their life, I love that the show was an uplifting show that uh, chose to highlight the issues children were facing and help them and say, hey, it's not mom and dad going, oh, your little problems. You don't have any bills to pay, play. Just, just shut up and go in your room, uh, yeah. you know, so. Did you did you always know you wanted to be an actor? Because I go ahead. Sorry. No, I, no, no, no. That was that was going to be the end of my question. I was going to say I tried to listen to I binge watched the ones all of the Ned's uh podcast oh, episodes dope. i think i've i think i'm about like five short from not watching all because i didn't want to ask you the same questions that you guys have already been talking about so i wanted to cover some things that you didn't uh, but i don't remember hearing about how you got into acting. into acting yeah so me uh i'm originally from small town mississippi like we live in the sticks like in the woods uh i grew up um on like some acreage with just my uh like my father's side of the family um, so like, uh, he had what, eight brothers and sisters. So nine of them, and there's like a street and all of our cousins just have like a street and you just go down one way and you're with aunt May, you're with, uh, uncle Greg, uncle Kurt this way. Da, 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 da. Um, 
And so we were just a rural family, no real knowledge uh, of entertainment like that. My mom, uh, she always considered herself shy, never wanted her kids to be shy. So she started putting my older brother in these community plays. And randomly, there was a 20th Century Fox film called My Dog Skip that was filming. I remember that. You remember it? Yeah. Mm-hmm. The little dog dies yeah. and everybody cries. Yeah, it was yeah, sad. Sad dog movie. Sad movie. Um, but uh, but yeah, it was starring Frankie Munitz and they were like, okay, yeah, we're in town filming this thing. We want your son to audition because this casting director, Francine Thomas, had seen him in the play. He was doing, uh, I think, The Prince and the Pauper, like a, a version of that. And I think I was like one of the background kids in it, but she saw my brother's performance and was like, yeah, we want him to audition. He auditioned for the project. We didn't hear anything for like three months. And then all of a sudden we get a call like, yeah, he's the guy that we want to go with. And and so he filmed that. So it was really just him. Dude, I, I just loved playing football, being outside fishing. You know, I was a rough and tumble yeah, kid like that. Yeah. And I just joined the family. The, my mom and brother moved out to Cali and my dad uh, and me came a little bit later. And yeah. You know, it's it's. So you were very similar to because me and my brothers acted, oh, yeah, and, yeah. but I was always the one who had the drive, the drive to want to do it and audition and be in Hollywood. My two younger brothers who enjoyed it kind of just came along. But my younger, yeah. my youngest brother books the most. Ended up, yeah, skyrocketing. Books yeah. the most. When I tell you, I mean, he wanted to be a regular kid at the end of the day. So like he stopped at a certain point, which super infuriating if like you're somebody that wants to do this and you're, <laughs> you're watching so somebody great. casually just book jobs like he booked a a bubblicious commercial with lebron james and i was just sitting Lit. here going this and this kid just doesn't want to do this Dang, he's just he's like, like i don't i want to i want to be a regular kid and like and like who wants to be a regular kid people like, do really people like want a childhood you know yeah Bruh. whatever who is this guy i have zero clue Bruh. oh wow so that's cool though that's yeah. So it was, yeah, it was based off my brother's career that we even moved out. And then we would go on these like hour long car drives, like we mentioned at the top. And I was like, yo, I'm sick of this. There's no way I'm going to be taking these car rides and not getting something out of it. So I was like, I'm going to start auditioning, dude. Oh, yeah. You know, my dad was like, oh, yeah, yeah, we can definitely start getting you in because, you know, hey, why not? Uh, and your dad was the one, I, I think, from what I've heard, that traveled with oh, you yeah, the it most. Was my dad mainly. Mom, yeah, my mom was a teacher, so she was usually like oh. working. And so my dad, uh, you know, he was a truck driver originally, and so so we yeah we drove out to um, so California. He's from used Mississippi, to so. driving. Oh so yeah, so that's yeah. like no big deal. To that's him. his thing. That's his thing, he's man. Just back and forth. Yep. Then he well, became a manager. What is something you learned from him being your manager that you can probably use in business today? Ooh, mm-hmm. <laughs> that I can. I mean, so many things. I mean, he's imparted so much knowledge on me. Uh, ooh, you know what? Get, get what you're owed. That that's something that that's something that he really instilled in me for you know for later projects. I kind of dropped the ball on Ned's declassified. They 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 owe me something and I didn't get it. <laughs> I'm still coming for you, but uh but yeah, get what you're owed. You know, don't settle for anything less than than you deserve when you're negotiating. Uh, and I guess uh to put it more succinctly, uh what what is it? He would say, uh do 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 uh don't don't expect what you don't inspect. And so that's like um that's like when you're doing these when you're getting a contract or someone's pitching a you know a deal to you inspect that contract and know what it is that you are expecting out of the deal because you don't want to show up and then be like hey but I thought I was going to get this and it's like no it's not the case actually you know what that's a quote from my uncle and my dad would often say it my uncle Lawrence uh, that quote but but yeah so you know that's um that's something I think that is beneficial for everyone in life in general like don't expect what you don't inspect Mm -hmm. uh you can't just leave it to someone else oh my manager's gonna handle it for me or they're gonna did it they're gonna no 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 you have to do it and that's the only way you can be secure and save yourself a a headache later you know and then you don't have anyone to point the finger at and get savvy with contracts oh yeah, like get savvy on your own that's the one thing i think my mom taught me was when i became an adult and i did my first tv job she she was Chris Jenner before Chris Jenner was Chris Jenner. Yep. And she got on the phone with me and said, before you sign anything, make sure payment is going to you directly oh, because yeah, it's part. standard practice to go to the agent and mm-hmm. have the and she like she said, you're going to have to fight. 
They're going to like put up a fight about it. They're not going to want to do it. This is what you want. Yeah. And before you sign, before anything starts filming and I did it and they put it in. So yeah. that way, like I get paid and then I pay my agent. But yeah. like, yeah. I don't need my agent to get payment directly. And then I have yeah. to wait yeah, 90 no. days to get payment. Because Yeah. Let them let them go bankrupt or some business deal goes bad or they fall off the yep. face of the earth. Now you're stuck waiting, you know, however long to access your funds. Which is crazy. And my mom's not a lawyer, but like somehow she knew like this is the stuff I had no idea. And anybody that asks me now, I go, you even with, you know, podcasts or media companies or talent agencies or marketing agencies like you get payment for what you've done directly yeah. and then you can allocate. They can send you an invoice. Right. There can be a process, but make sure money goes to you. Yeah. And and if someone's making it seem like it's some process that is too like, you know, hard for them, they're they're definitely trying to pull the wool over your eyes. Like, yep. no. Do you know who Theo Vaughn is? Theo Vaughn, yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. So he has a podcast. Funny and he guy, yeah. yeah, he made a an ep like he made a podcast episode a couple of weeks ago uh about this media company that essentially robbed him of Ooh. millions of dollars. Ooh. Um, and so forget the name of it but like it's learning lessons like that like he should not you know and That's but it ha and it's happening a lot in the podcast space right now oh yeah yeah and yeah. so it's a little bit it's just it's funny that's a weird yeah it's tough but um you had said in one of the episodes that you are great barbecue master oh yeah man i yeah. go in I all go right. in. <laughs> all right. I got some questions. I'm toot my own horn here. I need, I go need ahead. the first tip from you. Like if okay. you could give one, here, I'll move this. Um, if you could give one tip to make anybody a halfway decent barbecue artist, what would it be? One tip? Uh, I would say go ahead and invest in a thermometer. Ooh. You know, so, you know like I, I used to just love to just eyeball my meats and stuff like that. Um, but that thermometer is going to save you a lot of, a lot of stress because sometimes, especially if you're cooking outside, you never know what the wind's doing It's changing, uh, ch you know, changing the flame and things like that, or your coals aren't burning the way you thought they would get, get that, uh, get a thermometer and it'll really help you lock in and uh, like an internal thermometer that you can actually stick into whatever. Have you ever used a Traeger? Oh, Traegers are great. Traegers are awesome. Oh, no. Yeah, well, then that is that is even better. Just get a Traeger. Yes. <laughs> if you want to make some good meat, <laughs> get a Traeger. Everything for you. It's like you can set it with your phone. My cousin It'll... got a Traeger and was like showing me what he, the Bluetooth that you can like stick the things in. I was like, this Bruh. is insane. It's a, little, it's a little bit too much. It's a little bit too much, but it's perfect. It takes a little bit of the art of away being from able it. away from it. But, you know, I, who am I? Have, where's the best place you've had barbecue? Like the best Ooh. barbecue place you've ever had. Ooh, place? It's hard to say place, man. I mean, um, it could be if you have family that are like, yeah, oh, my cousin it. John, man. My cousin John. We're going John to your back cousin in John's house next week for. Uh, <laughs> Let's do it. Let's do it. He's going to kick it up. <laughs> you know, he loves to have guests. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. My cousin John and Monique, man, they throw down and he has a he has a Traeger. So he's been at it for a quick. I love me some barbecue. Yeah. There's, I think, two places that I've been. Franklin Barbecue, obviously, mm. in Austin, Texas, is world renowned. It's unbelievable. Yeah. Like, I, I thought it was hype at first because they're so popular for their barbecue. And then I had it and I was like, oh, Damn. this is on another level. That, and then there's that. a place in Phoenix called Little Miss Barbecue. Little Miss, okay. Close second. But I haven't, I mean, do you, do you watch much like barbecue like YouTube? Do you ever get trapped in those um, videos? No, but uh, there was a Netflix show called Chef's Table, but they had a barbecue edition. Mm, okay, and yeah, it was like each chef and how the, I'm. A, I if you've got one, I will absolutely listen to oh, it. Well, d dude, this, there's this guy Google Foods, man. He is lit look up google foods and the way they film it it's like just food porn man like Hell he'll yeah. pick up that rib and just smack that thing you know he'll <laughs> do the little spritz of, of water uh, dude it's, it's i love lot. food porn give me i google i foods, intentionally on my instagram explore page will like make sure the algorithm knows like, like show hey, I love me this. more food yeah. I want to see sexy food. Like, especially if it's a, like, recipe, show me all of it. Oh, yeah. It's like, oh, I can recreate it myself? All okay, I'm it. going home, man. Put on my apron. Yeah, right. And get to business. Uh, where is the best place you've traveled to, just in general? 
Best place I've traveled to. Um, the coolest place you've traveled. To. Sierra Leone was super yeah, that is cool. cool, and th- I mean, just the fact that we could get a little bit of anything done. Like, I mean, it, maybe this is wrong, but like, we would kind of just pay the like police officers to kind of like block off like streets and stuff like that. Yeah, you know, like Mexico. I mean, yeah, kinda, kinda, <laughs> you, know, you know, so um, so yeah, it just felt like we had um the ability to kind of do whatever and like film get the best shots that we that we needed there that was super cool was it for a music video it was like three music videos we shot three music videos in the span of i want to say what like a week and a half or something like that yeah man yeah do you as a i'm jumping all over the place this is going to be called the adhd podcast um (laughs) do you do you appreciate or does it kind of turn you off if the talent you're directing wants to collaborate like if they have an idea and say they How go How dare you have an idea? <laughs> I don't on know. My set. You know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, some people yeah. might be like, but <laughs> you know, if there's something that the camera guy isn't doing or something that maybe somebody thinks that is like, "Hey, wouldn't this be oh, cool if Dude, I'm I'm super egalitarian. Yeah. So whoever on my team has a bright idea that will be that that will benefit the common goal, I'm Love all that. for it. Keep it concise. Make it make sense. Know what you're talking about. And don't make me do a thousand takes for it. <laughs> yeah, no, that part. And <laughs> what, what I don't like is someone's presenting a problem without a solution. So I just don't like the way that's looking. Oh, I, I don't hate know. Something's that. just off. <laughs> Something's. Have just you gotten off. that before? Um. Yeah, that's a yeah. I, I worked. <laughs> I worked with an an artist who was also an investor on a project, and oh, when you're dealing with so that, then he's a great guy. Uh, yeah, it was actually a, a lady. This one, but uh, it's all, it's all kind of the same. Um, those those investors who want to star in the project or they're the singer on the song, it can be it can uh, be precarious to navigate how to tell them hell no, that's not gonna yeah. that's not gonna work, or give them the technical reason why it won't work you know so i, I like I hate wasting somebody's my breath paying you you're like all right fuck it let you know i'm like okay there's a little bit of okay if this is the way you want it to look i know why it's not gonna work and the the editor's gonna hate me for it mm-hmm. but you're paying the money so mm-hmm. gotta do it yeah that's a pain though you're like i don't i don't want to be bought to like whatever whatever oh, i guess yeah I it guess- happens freelancing man like uh, yeah. I've had to limit the jobs that I accept because not all money is good money. Mm, agreed. And you'll have like a much longer headache in this mm. editing process, all because the person that you're working with either doesn't have their idea fleshed out, or or they just want to be overly involved, and it ends up subtracting from mm-hmm. your, the expertise that you're bringing to the mm-hmm. table. But hey, sometimes you gotta let go of the control a little bit and just trust the process. Yeah. yeah, a lot, of, and a lot of people who want to make their own projects are not that type of people mm-hmm. at all. I've seen, I've seen people be very particular about the projects that they do, but and you're like, you just gave up a little bit of control, a little bit of control. Now I've had that problem too, where I've taken on way too much. Like I've done projects, like you know, oh, I'm going to see this movie from start to finish, and I'm going to be the one making the freaking prelim every morning, and yeah, everybody's yeah. going to know exactly what to do. And then by the end of it, I'm just exhausted. And I've learned that you really just have to find staff and team members who are great at what they do and you can trust to just take the reins in that area. Mm -hmm. That way you don't have to, because you're going to miss something. If you're trying to juggle lighting, you're trying to juggle sound, you're trying to juggle composition, like it's, it's a lot to do, uh, especially if you're wearing that producer hat and you're handling permits and stuff too, like yada, yada. Yep. I got the same problem, just no no permit issues right now. Oh, no permit issues, yeah. No permit but you're getting it done. The podcast, I'm loving it, man. I was watching Mr. Beast on, mm. uh, he was on some podcast. They were talking, he was talking about um, how he creates his videos and everything. But yeah. the one thing that he talked about that I was like, was having a team. And they were mm-hmm. like, he's, they've got to A, believe in me. They got to B, like, be passionate about this. But like. I delegate. I delegate, delegate a lot of stuff to my team members. And, you know, you can only do so much in before one sitting before you're like, back. I'm absolutely like for me with editing, like I love I love editing videos. It's like one of my favorite things to do. However, I'm. I'm too attached to shit sometimes. Mm-hmm. And so it's like I spend too much time it's and it's just like done. it's not it's never going to get yeah. done. And sometimes I just got to like 
now I'm at a point where I'm like, you know what? I have so much content. I just need to like hand it off and let yeah. somebody else do it. What advice would you give? Because, and I'm sure you get this question a lot. Yeah. Um, anybody that, and the industry has totally changed. So I don't know that what advice that would have been given uh, 10 years ago is even mm, valid now. Valid yeah. now, but I'm sure you have a wealth of advice. What advice would you give to anybody that is looking to, I wouldn't even say like try to act in Hollywood, just try to mm. act in general. in general. What yeah. would you, what would, what would piece of advice would you give for somebody on where they should start? To start. Ooh, good one. Uh, ooh, 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 ooh. If you're starting from scratch, I'm a person who's not opposed to uh, like, like background acting and stuff like that. Like some people are like, oh, you know, never do that. But if you're like from scratch and you've never been on a set before, go and see what a set is like. And mm -hmm. one quick way to do that is to book a couple background acting jobs. And I'm saying book, but just submit yourself for uh, for some jobs just so you can go ahead, get your feet wet, know exactly what this is and find out if you actually even like it. Because mm -hmm. I, I found that some people really think that they're about that life and they don't want to spend those long hours on set. They really they don't want to sit around for nine hours a day, you know, and eat delicious crafty. I, I don't get that. Delicious I don't get that. What's crafty. wrong with you? Nothing is wrong. <laughs> like I would, I'd rather be bored out of my mind on a set for 10 hours a day than be stuck in one chair at the same desk on a cubicle, yeah. in a cubicle, you Ooh. know, for the rest of my life. Oh yeah. I mean, it's, uh, you know, I'm, I'm cringing. <laughs> I cringe too. Part of me, though wishes that i had done the that office lifestyle i i've, I've always kind of felt like i wanted to sit really? in a room yep go to board rooms then come back to my little cubicle i feel like it could be fun i don't know not even fun but i think daniel would make an excellent lawyer oh yeah i really do so i think you'd make to, a great lawyer I'm study up you but know, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. No, no 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 i took this like linguistics course uh, it was corpus linguistics right and it was it was partially like computational linguistics okay. and it was basically picking out specific words in a body of text. It could be a body of text that was like someone's own like written testimony or even lyrics from a song, but basically identifying um, intent behind like the words that were used uh -huh. and you can use a computer to like identify, you know, where things were done. So anyway, uh, they were, the, the instructor, the professor was just saying how a lot of lawyers are getting into computational linguistics to go and look at old text to truly uh, decipher the meaning of words and uh, be more informed about what the law actually states based off how words have been used throughout time. That's you know? fascinating. Yeah, so maybe no, 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 it, it makes the... total sense because half the time, especially if we talk about, so if we were to talk about like constitutional law issues, yeah. a lot of interpretation it's a lot of interpretation and a lot of it is left up to people who are interpreting it because they don't know and it has it could have two different meanings yep and two totally and there are there's uh, you know they there's names for these types of people who believe that constitution is read one way or interpreted yeah. another yeah. but the fact that like there are people that are trying to essentially find the science behind what is the intent of that word yeah. is i mean it definitely adds not that it makes that much of a difference now because like shit changes. And so yeah. it's like how much applicability does shit that happened, in the past but time, yeah. intent matters, especially yeah. as it relates to laws that are passed even now and, and precedents that have been yeah. set. It's uh -huh. like, okay, this precedent was set, but it was set at this time when that word meant this yeah. and you know, the meaning of words, it, it changes, especially when the usage of the word changes or the culture that's using it changes. And mm -hmm. yeah. precedence is a funny thing. It, you know, it's honed in so much in law school and then it like quite literally gets thrown, thrown out the out. window even, in matter. real life. And I'm just like, my brain misfires because I'm like, I this is goes against everything that I've ever law, like learned in law school. But OK, yeah. I'm not going to opine on this stuff. I don't even know what to make of it. What was the coolest thing you've learned out of 
coming out of your linguistics major at Long Beach. By the way, we both went to Cal State Long Cal Beach. Cal State Long Beach. Pew, 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 pew. Gotta love. Air I horns, love yeah. Cal State Long Beach. It's such a great school. I loved it. Yeah, it was great, man. Yeah, I, I love those guys. And I think we're the Sharks now or something like that. I think we changed the name from 49ers. Know. 49ers were way better. It doesn't matter. We don't have a football team. We need a football we team. We need a football team. That's the only way people are going to be emboldened. You know why they don't support. have a football team? I think somebody died. I think they had a football player that died. And that's why what? they just got rid of the team. That's hey, the rumor the I heard. Away? I know. Jeez. We need a football team. I've yeah. never, and in high school, I went to performing arts high school. So I've never gone to a school that had a football team. I've no, never no, been to dang. a football game. I've never been to like a water polo or a volleyball game. I've dang. never been to a, I went to NFL, one. You've been to NFL? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, but like not in a school in setting. Time, yeah. Dang. Did you go to public? You went to public school in Long Beach. Uh, yeah, yeah, I did public school in uh, Long Beach. Um, yeah, I did it all. I, where, where did I start out? I started at Prisk, Prisk Elementary. This was right when I moved from Mississippi. Prisk Elementary. Then from there, I was a Stanford Hawk, Stanford uh, Seahawk. Oh uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, then Milliken Ram. Milliken. I was a Milliken Ram. Played yep. on the football team there, and then I went to uh, Renaissance Renaissance High School, which was like a it was a performing arts high school while I was on like Neds. Oh. They were a little bit more lenient with me with getting like work and stuff to set. How were like you? That. I think you've talked about this before, but how were other? How were your school Mates? colleagues? Yeah, oh, uh -huh. to you when you were on Neds. Oh, I mean, yeah, cool. Like you know, there's that initial, uh, oh my god, there's that guy, like type thing. But you know, after a couple of days in it. school, they're like, yeah, am I gonna keep going? <laughs> oh my god, every day. <laughs> <laughs> um and then no you know it's funny though you do get like a mix of kind of interactions because people have spent that whole time going oh and gushing over you and then now it's like oh well i gotta prove to him that i don't really care who he is so yeah. they'll be a little bit more cold uh but i just you know i have a pretty big personality so i'm just always ribbing people and you know just giving give it just like, giving the whatever. big energy you know yada yada um but no it was it was cool i never really had any altercations based off the show um but yeah, I mean, you know, people test you. People will test you. You know, they want to know what's up. And uh, yeah, you just stand your ground. They got to prove things. themselves to you for some reason, which mm -hmm. I think kind of just means like, you know, like, I'm yeah, winning yeah. It, whatever. Have you ever been in a, like, a feud with another actor or celebrity? A feud. Talk to me about it. Give me the I, dirt. I don't altercate. I, I, know you I'm don't. Not, I, I don't, know don't altercate, man. I wish I You've could tell you. You've always been just a like lover, not a fighter. That's it. That's it. You know, and if somebody doesn't love me, I love that they don't love me, or I love that they love what they do love. You know, it's like uh, there's a bright side to everything in in my uh in my perspective. Um, any issues? No, but. When you go to sets, I mean, no, when you go to auditions, sometimes it can be ruthless. And of course, that's stopping a little bit now. I've had people like, it, it, there's this one kid. I, I, I remember this guy. I don't, don't know his name. Don't know what he's doing these days. But um, I remember when I was auditioning for Cookie, there was this guy that um, cut me in line. Like, he was just so like, oh, yeah, I just finished this movie. And I really have to go. So you're just going to have to wait. And he just cuts me in line. And like, I was like a... I was like, but my, my name's right there on the list. And I wanted to tell someone, but sometimes you're at like, you're at these auditions and the casting director's like inside. So it's just, you're just there with your people. And you, I, I felt, I was heartbroken at that moment. And I thought that the whole audition was going to be trash after that, but it probably helped me get into that kind of fearful, like character. Oh, for whatnot. sure. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But no, yeah, no, no real feuds, man. I no. hate people that cut in line. Oh, I don't general, hate right? yeah. many people. But even like, I think my one thing, especially with like auditions or even dance class now, it's so crazy to me because yeah. I remember everything, especially if you're somebody that cuts me off in line. Oh, like I that. will embed that your face in the back of my head for Damn. eternity. Good Lord. Because, good Lord. <laughs> I, um, because you just never know. Like if, I guess on principle, if you were to cut somebody off right in an audition or say you were to cut somebody off and you didn't know that they were the cousin or the nephew of somebody oh, yeah, who's auditioning as well. You yeah. just blew it. You blew it. And so it always just blows my mind that people don't have the forethought to be like, let me just be conscious and self-aware of my yeah. surroundings and the people around me. And yeah, I don't know. I mean, some people I'm just like, hey, you, you were raised You're also wrong, tall. Man. And I think a part of me is like a little bit, um, it's a Napoleon complex. Like, <sighs> I feel like people always just never see oh. me or they stand in front of me. And so I get 
double oh, angry really when hits. people it really hits uh-huh, i get yeah. like what is it about me that make you feel like you can do this <laughs> yes i'll show yes. you yeah uh, do you ever get imposter syndrome imposter syndrome you know that's like a uh, are you gonna say it's not a real thing well i was about to say it's like a buzzword kind of uh, yeah, yeah, syndrome. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah. um but no it, i mean it's real and i feel like humans i feel like it's always been around i've just been hearing it so much more lately i feel like it's just i don't know it, it's in our collective consciousness and people are saying it you know. yeah for sure for uh, sure i've i've experienced it's like narcissism now oh dude that word get gets dropped so on the much, daily man. don't tell my oh my young lady she's she loves so oh you're being so narcissistic right now and i'm like, like you can't you use that every time you don't like <laughs> <laughs> the way i do something okay come on <laughs> Be specific about what you don't like, please. Um, but yeah, no, that um yeah, imposter syndrome, it happens. Um, but it's hard to be a human and take on any occupation. Mm-hmm. You know, we all doubt our abilities from time to time. Sometimes I just doubt not not whether I was ever equipped to do the occupation that I'm taking on. But sometimes I just doubt maybe just I woke up this morning and I lost it, you know, and I don't I don't got it anymore. And oh, that's not what that's why I'm not getting a call because da, 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 da. Uh, but we really have to encourage ourselves. You know, that's the only way to combat um, imposter syndrome. Encourage yourself, you know, make sure that the voice inside of your head is giving you positive reinforcement and also man work hard at your craft that way you don't have to guess Mm -hmm. you know be aware of what your contemporaries are doing um if it's editing you know look at your favorite videos recreate that thing from scratch that way you're like okay i I know i'm up to par with this guy or you know if you're an actor like really just film yourself evaluate it and make sure you're 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 on top of it you know if you stay practiced up you don't have to feel like an imposter that's that's the way i feel how do you get through that on the days where it's just hard? Like there's just naturally some days where you're like, no, nah, I'm not feeling like feeling yeah. myself today. I don't know. I get those days and I don't <laughs> I don't know that I can pinpoint something that I use to get out of it. Sometimes I just got to write it out. <laughs> you're, you're not wrong. You're not. You ride it out, man. Yeah. Sometimes you got to ride that thing, man. Um, Yeah, we can. You know, discouragement befalls us. You know, it's mm-hmm. it's very human. Uh, sometimes I just need to rest. Like if I feel like I'm not able to do my job, I'm like, let me just try to make sure that I'm in the best condition to do my job. So if I need to take a little bit of time off, I'm going to take it off, rest, um, you know, get back into it when I'm ready and, uh, and just continue to work hard. I think people judge themselves as if they have to, uh, just manifest something amazing every time you might have a couple hits and misses every now and again. Uh, but make sure that you value the progress that you're making more so than some end point you have to be at. I, mm-hmm. I say, remind yourself of the progress. Like, e- even if you fail, say, hey, I got better at what I do. When did you Keep come pushing. to that realization? Because I feel like for me, it was that happened fairly recently. Like that mm. discovery of enjoy, like the progress over the goal, yeah, like yeah. really got imprinted in me in like the last year. Mm, did that come good. to you recently or were, did you have like a defining moment where you were like you know what i oftentimes have to remind myself that the progress matters because we do long to be in you know at, at some point but uh you know if you reach a point there's always gonna be some new point that you want to yeah. um you know get to anyway so value that progress value the journey um i feel like it it took me taking a long break like i went back to mississippi and just was away from the industry for a long time this was Really? This, was even, this was even before college for me because I, I took some years off uh, before college um, and and it and it took me being away from all of the I guess the motivations of outsiders like who were trying to push me to some some uh, you know elevated position and oh you got to keep you know working hard at this just keep chipping away to get to this thing we know you all can be. And it was like, let me just find out who I want to be. And maybe I already am and don't have to try and be anything. Mm-hmm. Let me find the things that I enjoy doing that make me feel like myself. Uh, so, yeah, a, c- a couple years back, I said, hey, you know, just progress every day because you love to progress. There's no specific endpoint that you need to mm-hmm. achieve to be validated. 
You don't need anyone else's uh, validation. Um, if you know you worked your hardest and that you have this long tenure of progressing, then you're right where you need to be. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we don't have to talk about it. Uh, uh oh no 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 it's uh -oh. fine uh you had mentioned yo go ahead you had briefly very <laughs> briefly. very when and you like i know where you go Lindsay was like Lindsay was like no 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 like we're not gonna just like deflect yeah, yeah you yeah, went yeah. through a little bit of a dark time she's so great at asking i questions. know My i love God. that about her i love that she's like no 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 we're not gonna <laughs> deflect i was like dude, therapy session with Lindsay shaw <laughs> dude i'm a super third person removed you know from my own experiences especially when i'm talking to people yeah. uh but she knows how to jab and, and get in it but but what are you saying what does that mean to you um so yeah no i mentioned uh a darker period on the pod um it, now which one is this is this yeah, the thing where you we're like said you wrote a little manifesto oh, and you that, were like yeah, yeah, really yeah. but this was before college was that was before, yeah. So this whole was that in line with what you were talking about yeah. when you went back to Mississippi? Yeah, I had to had to find myself, dude. Um, and and yeah, Mississippi was great for that. Somewhere away from the societal structures that kind of mold us. Um, yeah, so just getting some fresh air is great, and just recognizing your own humanity, the fact that you're valuable without having to achieve anything. Um, so so yeah, that was. There was a period where I was just a little bit um, unsatisfied with the goals that I thought I had. And so I had to find new goals and then also just acknowledge that you're OK in this life just by being. You don't really have to do anything extra for that, like validation or whatever. And yeah, I definitely needed that break. I feel like it's really hard, especially in this day and age, with everybody doing quite literally everything on social media. Like it's hard and people are doing some pretty impressive stuff, you oh, know, yeah. and they're yeah. doing a lot of, <laughs> of big budget stuff. And you're like, well, Hey, you know, even me with my podcast, I'm like, damn it. What am I, you know, everybody's got you out here though. You, you out know, here. I, but like, it's not stopping me from just like doing, cause this is just like something that I wanted to do. And right. Regardless of yes. the outcome or what it's going to look like on the back end, it got, everybody's got to have a starting point, you know? Yes. And you wanted to do it. Yeah. And tomorrow you're going to be better at doing it. For sure. Mm -hmm. For sure. I already have like out of the 10 episodes that I've already filmed that probably is not going to see the light of day. Like I learned so much just Yo, from start to dude, then. I saw it's like, like, okay, boom, boom, I need to get this now. condenser mic set up. Oh, you're fixing the lights. Oh, how do you like this? Da, da, da. So but you it was know what you're cool doing. To see when I went in for like went into yours to see oh. like and like, but I was like, I was sitting here so self doubtful yeah. because I was like, oh, like I, I'm not as like up to par. But like I walked in a room and I was like, no, I'm pr I'm doing uh, like I'm pretty similar, yeah, right? Yeah. Like it's to it's how obviously different it totally be? different. No, but like this caliber, is, but, on top of it. But it's like, I'm like, okay, I'm not, I'm not off track here. Like yeah. what I was doing at, like, I'm not, that part, not like in a closet, just like looking for, you know, that the part. flashlight kind of thing. Yeah. So, but it's been super fun and I'm super grateful that you made the drive down here to oh, come no here. Problem, it man, means so much to me that you came here. Yeah, dude. What can we expect from you in the next, since you don't have since we're focusing on progress, uh -huh, the next uh -huh. five years, are we seeing, hmm. are we seeing a uh, musician, Daniel, kind of? You know what? I might have to, I might have to go ahead and do a release, man. It's, it's been a minute. It's I'm been a cool minute. You, I'm I, I heard that in. bad, that bad bunny cover and I heard it so on pitch and I was like, uh, oh my God. And it's rare that you hear like the deep voice, like you hear the, you know, cool. it's not a, it's not a very common yeah no people want to be heard well. and they want to cut through the beat and i'm like yo just go with the beat go you know with just the beat. that low end is really where it's at sometimes and uh and i feel like i'm trying to get away from that high frequency <laughs> <laughs> you know like i don't want to be affiliated with this like squeaky yeah high pitched yeah, yeah. you know and I, I love like like you know eminem like he he goes in like and it's very sawtooth like chop 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 chop, chop, chop. Yeah. love that but I mean, I, I feel like he just executed that so well. So it's like, you know, new lane, new because lane. Because that was his thing, right? Was like it was thing. probably his. his and, and, and we needed it at that time, I feel. Um, so, yeah. Who, uh, so you were in Long Beach. You said 10. Did you say you moved here around Like 10? around 10 years old. Yeah. Okay. So you grew up in 90s, 2000s, Long Beach, LA oh, hip hop. Yeah. Who's your favorite 
rap artist of all time. Man, Snoop is like just Agreed. just the delivery, Agreed. man. Like people want to sleep on Snoop because I mean, may, maybe the bars weren't so intricate, but he knew cool, man. He knew how to put cool on wax and i mean and you just feel cool singing some snoop lyrics man you, you just will and you know what he can literally repackage that same beat stamp a new name on it and guess what it's Dog. his yeah. it's his for sure he for did sure. it on a couple other songs and i was like it's just like it's snoop you it's can't just get away you from it, right no. you can't but it's his it's a buy it's a whole vibe man and i mean he, the guy works so hard he's so great at what he does and i just love all the side missions that he's doing these days like he's on every freaking commercial you know, first time i met he's soup so snoop i said yeah. soup first time i met soup soup, <laughs> soup. but first time i met snoop my brother was in an orbit gum commercial with him like this is when I was maybe like 13 or something like really? that. Really? And we became really great friends with uh, one of his bodyguards. So my, my dad and him, like, he's I, like our You know uncle. what? I think I met that bodyguard uncle recently. Said, Go ahead. Oh, yeah. Hey, said. Big, oh, wait. big guy. Yeah. What? Did you run into it? Did you have an altercation <laughs> with a, one of Snoop's bodyguards at a concert? I'm just extrapolating. No, I went. Snoop played down the street. No, I was pretty drunk. There was a guy in a corner. He had this, like, build cap on. He was smoking this huge blunt. Uh, and he started, like, I swear to God, it started here. And, yeah. like. You know, halfway through, whoever was on, it wasn't Snoop yet. Yeah. Um, or am I, I don't, it's irrelevant. Um, he, like, hadn't even broke it. And I don't know what prompted me to go up to this man and make a comment about it. But I did. And I said, like, you going to smoke that whole thing tonight? It was corrupt. Wow. Do you know corrupt? Oh, corrupt. Well, yeah. You yeah. Just have yeah. So it was corrupt with sunglasses on in the corner of a room. I don't know what prompted me. And he went, he so coyly and i didn't like i didn't at the time i did not smoke weed i had yeah. never smoked weed yeah. and but he like he took the weed and he just like went like this and i was like well i can't bitch out oh yeah shit. I like i can't not take it this is yeah. fucking corrupt like once i realized who it was i was like uh oh like i'm screwed the real question did you cough I oh. don't think I coughed. Oh, okay. But I definitely took more than two great big hits. Okay, nice. And then I don't know what prompted me after that to then go up to Snoop's bod like bodyguard yeah, okay, and say, okay. I'm supposed to be backstage. Okay. I don't know what happened, but he like he went to another guy. The other guy looked at me. They consulted with each other. And then he was like, you're good. <laughs> I was oh, like, hey. <laughs> you, hey, you passed the test. But then <laughs> I got so cross-faded. Yeah. That I ended up passed out on like a park bench in the it backstage, to which then corrupt walked by. I was like, like, look at this weak bitch. This mother. This yeah, bitch yeah. right here. Dang. Crossfade. And my friend had to take me home. I drove us there. My friend had to drive us Sheesh. home. Didn't even get to meet Snoop. I was very Aww. excited. <laughs> I, I was so Snoop probably fucked walked up. by while you're passed out. Like, <laughs> he did. I was Ooh. like, well, that was fun, guys. <laughs> that was fun. Wild, man. I just need a redo. I need a repeat. Sheesh. You know, but uh, Snoop's a great one. Snoop, uh, Dr. Dre. Oh yeah, Dre. Yeah, I know. Eminem. I mean, so many pioneers. Just West Coast. Yeah. Like it's hard. It's hard to just say Snoop. Like uh, you know, Game was huge back. You know, back in that time too. Yeah. Like they didn't love it. The underdogs on top. Yeah, he, he killed that man. I, so so many great artists on the West Coast. Town. Yeah. Kendrick right. Lamar though, we got to give him the credit these oh, days. Oh man, that King, Super man. Bowl performance out of. I think that might be one of my favorites of all time. Yeah. I mean, I There's like other I, on the bill, but for he, sure, yeah. for sure. Uh, not just Kendrick, that whole, oh, the whole, the yeah, whole yeah, yeah, Super yeah. Bowl, Fire. Mary Fire. J. Blige. I love her. Um, I was born at Long Beach Memorial. So like, I'm like, oh, I yeah, love Long Beach. Yeah. yeah Long Beach all day. Um, but Kendrick Lamar's performance out of everybody, especially the dance performance was just like oh, yeah, unreal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Him at Coachella too, I think was like unbelievable. Him and Beyonce were. Like, oh yeah, yeah. Beyonce always killed. Beyonce, Be Beachella was Bruh. arguably one of the I, greatest performances I didn't see of all that time. That one, I when did I go? Was this two thousand nine, two thousand seven? She had done something with Jay Z, like, uh, and I went to one of those with Devin, one of those Coachella. Oh really? Killed it. I think MGMT performed that year too. MGMT's great. Bruh, yeah. MGMT. I saw a uh, Chromeo this year. Chromeo is an amazing. Yeah. They're like funky. Yeah. His funk duo. They're great. They Bad Bunny was I low key at festivals. Um, I leave for the headliner. I don't like. What? I don't oh, like, like to that. say. Well, you just want to beat the. I just want to beat the, the traffic rush? home. Yeah, no, like yeah, I'd yeah. rather just watch it, especially <laughs> if they live feed. Like I like being there during the day to see the artists that I wouldn't normally go see. Yeah. 
But like Bad Bunny, and I'm so small that I don't see shit anyway. Oh, dang, someone's got to put you, you on know? the shoulders. Yeah, or I'm watching it from the VIP tent miles away. Like, I'll yeah. just watch the, and I love, especially now when they do the live streams. Like, they're so great at the filming of it now. Yeah, like, they're so shitty. great to watch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The way Bad Bunny's show was filmed was like, I, like I'm so glad I was at home to watch it to while watch it. Oh, we were at our Air Airbnb. Did you hear, did you hear? About the two billion dollar Powerball lottery winner. No. Just gonna talk about it. You didn't hear about Wait, it? Is it the guy who went won and then went out and won again? No, not that guy. No, Tell me about it. Tell this me about it. It was two, like two He won two billion dollars? He won two billion dollars. He won two billion dollars. But it, it, that's how far far up it got. Ooh. One winner won two billion dollars. One winner. You wanna hear what he's bought already? What did he buy? So he took the lump sum, so you can right, you get the lump sum or you get annual annuity, yeah, right? Yeah, so the lump yeah. sum is nine hundred and ninety-eight million dollars in, in the cash option. Ooh. But then you gotta pay taxes. So yeah. as a total, he got six hundred and twenty-eight point okay. five million dollars, which is still a lot of money. Damn. Yeah. What? He's already spending his money. He bought a $25 million home in the Hollywood Hills. Okay, 25. That's his first house. The second house was four million dollars, I think, in Palm Springs. The third house was a forty-seven million dollar home in Bel Air, for a Bel Air compound. He also bought a almost, I think it was like a half a million dollar vintage Porsche, and okay. um, yeah, I just thought it was super interesting because I I had just gotten to talking about this with somebody yeah. the other day that seventy percent of lottery lottery winners go broke. Yeah, and it, this is and he's why. on track. He's on track. He's got to pay it. property taxes. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. What would oh. you do with 628 million? First of all, would you take the annuity or would you take the lump sum payment? Uh, I've heard different perspectives on it, Likewise. man. Likewise. Uh, it's it's tough. I mean, if he knows that he doesn't have any dependents, he's just trying to <laughs> blow it all and like in whatever span of time. Like how old is he? If he's like 70. He's then like, like 41. Yeah. 41 or something he was like in his early 40s because <sighs> you end up getting more with the annuity right but then they yeah. talk about how maybe uh inflation ends up like screwing you a little bit something like that is that true i don't know inflation yeah, yeah. so so i don't know maybe, maybe <laughs> he was wise to do it but <laughs> he but said God he damn. said yeah i'd take the i think i would take a million cash. dollar crib do you need it wait you 47 said, 40, 25 million dollar home in the Hollywood Hills. Damn. 4 million dollar home in Palm Springs and then 47 million dollar home I, I for hope a he never Campbell. buys another thing for the rest of his you life. You have to furnish it. <sighs> Unless you buy it furnished. I Hopefully. I would hope Hopefully that if you're buying did. a 47 million dollar home that it would yeah, be Yeah, I hope it already came with some Porsches inside of there or something like that. Some My Ferraris. guess is he hasn't bought or paid for an accountant or yeah, a CPA. Clearly, but he should. He should he do that. He should. Now. Somebody should budget. Yeah. That, which Damn. was one of, I think one of your tips, by the way, that you had oh. given in a previous was like budget. I'm not, Budgeting I matters. suck at budgeting. Uh, it, I can't. Accounting, like it's literally having an account of what's coming <laughs> in and leaving. Like, and I can stand to do better. I'm not going to pretend like I'm just the best, but uh, just having knowledge of the fact that you don't have to guess how much money is where yeah. and what is it doing. You should know. I just don't, I'd never monitor how much I actually like. Yeah. It's just like, I'll, I'll make it make sense. Are you? Have you had an allergy I'm dumb attack in other yet? Ways. An allergy attack? No, from okay. the cats. I'm allergic okay. to cats. She has cats. They're around. I, I, I see we, a little bit of hair put on this, the oh, mic. No. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I'm good. I haven't I tried to get I haven't had the attack yet. What do you do if you start having attacks? Oh, I just. Oh, you mean like what happens? Just, to me? Yeah. My eyes start to get like all like okay. puffy and red all and stuff right. like that, and I like sniffle. Well, thank so. you be for being the first allergic guest to come <laughs> here and I survived. Live guys. to tell the tale, man. Oh, um. By the way, do you? Okay, so like I'm not. I'm gonna tell you the original plan that I had for my podcast. I'm not gonna make you drink the whole thing. Oh, but uh oh. But do you drink? Like, do you? Can you have a sip of poor loco? Four loco, four loco still exists. <laughs> Are you serious? Four loco. So I, so I started. Somebody said four loco was making a comeback. So I decided. Somebody's like, you need a niche. Damn. And I was like, okay, my niche is we'll be drinking four locos niche. and asking as niche. niche, niche, niche. Fuck it. Yeah, but look, I like niche. Let's go not, with niche. Not fucking French. <laughs> um. Niche, niche. And so, yeah. to which everybody, out of all of the niches that I proposed, everybody liked the Four loco idea. And I was like, you guys are fucking dumb. Oh, but, so the only thing that remained was that I have a Four loco face cam. Face cam, let's do it. Okay, let's, let me go get, go. would you prefer, uh, uh, let me go grab it. All right, guys, I'm going to be diving into some Four loco. 
we're going to see. We're going to see. But yeah, didn't it get like discontinued um, because of what? Like heart, people having heart attacks? A little, little heart palpitation never hurt nobody. Let's go with some Four loco. <laughs> okay, here it comes, guys. I'm going to meet my doom. Oh, you got a All full right, one? Oh, a, my you God. You don't have to drink the whole thing. Oh, this is wait, was your goal for people to drink the whole thing, though, yeah, originally? Yeah, because, oh. because people get... Dude, when I tell you that, Good Lord. that I have never had anything mess me up. Worse than? And you're a tiny girl. You're a tiny girl. For, and for it's not even that it gets me drunk. It just makes me feel terrible. What's in this stuff? The guy at 7-Eleven told me homeless guys drink this and only homeless guys. Yeah, I mean, yeah, this, I, be careful. You to might which I said up, even you better. You might wake up without a home after drinking this yeah, thing. Yeah, you definitely will. Okay. So I ran out of mine, but I will be drinking the Simply Lemonade instead. Okay, I was looking for the ingredients. They don't even have them on here. <laughs> They're not going to. <laughs> it's 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 motor oil. Motor oil. Okay. Oh, premium malt beverage <laughs> with artificial flavor. It's malt liquor. It's, <laughs> it's caramel color and sucralose. Okay, just a sip. Look right into the camera <laughs> and give it a sip. Why not? We'll cheers. I hate it. to be a party pooper, but yeah. You don't. Oh, you also no, don't. Do I don't no, want to make it to me. Okay, I'm ready? Do it, ready, dude. And this is cheers. This has been friends. awesome. Yes, it's been awesome. Turn up. Turn up. Here we, we go. Pie, cheers. Mm. Wow, that was. <laughs> <laughs> On camera, just dead. Good lord. Um. Good yeah. lord, right? It's been done. What does the gold taste like? Not bad. You want to try this one? This is way better. Yeah, you might want to like wash lemonade. it down with that. That's simply lemonade. That is so much I, better. I, I, I'm not even. I'm just going to I'm gonna take a second step. Mm. Get this away from me. Oh, God. <laughs> wow. Well, thank you, Daniel. Yeah, it's been up, fun. Jim. It's been great. Fuck yeah. Reunited First one in the can. It so good. Uh, I'll tag all your stuff, your socials below. Sounds Buy good. your tickets to the live podcast. Oh, I yeah. will be November there. 13th. 